Rashid, talk to the people. How did you start battling? Uh, I've never. A lot of people. Some people know. Some people don't know. I never. I never ever battled a form of battling. Well, uh, no, nah, that's not really battling. I haven't. I haven't really battled at all. Like I haven't battled on the corner in the lunchroom. Nothing like that. So you started um, out a rapper. Yeah, I, I rap. Like I, I rap, and I actually gave up rap. Um, one of my producers passed away, and back then I didn't know that. Um, well, at first I was in search for a producer, but at first I didn't know that a producer is as you know, it's very important for the development of an artist. And then until I got older, you start seeing like, okay, that's why. Eric B and Rakim. That's why Dr. Dre and Snoop, you always got these pairs that was like, you know, you got Drake and 40 type of thing. And they really just know your sound. So one of my uh, producers, he ended up uh, passing away. He got killed or whatever. And I was just like, man, I'm done with rap, man. Like I've been trying to find some shit that's going on. I was like, man, I'm just, I'm done. Uh, Ace gets out of jail. Ace get out of jail. And, um, and Ace, um, Ace, Drops a freestyle. Right? He drops a freestyle. I'm like, man, this nigga actually pretty fucking good. So, all right, cool. Uh, uh, we He ends up going to the studio. And I went on the second session. I went to the first session. We made a song. Second session. I went and he was taking a break. And we turned on the battle rap joint. And I think, I, I want to say, I forgot who we was watching. I ain't going to lie. I ain't about to make it up. But something along the notion we both looked at each other and was like man like we can do this shit and i just remember replying like yeah probably but i don't i've been waiting for a nigga to like kind of call me out but it just never happened so he was like man i think i'm gonna book a battle i said for real i said i bet nigga i didn't know that nigga meant in three weeks so i'm like <laughs> holy shit like he told me and the thing about it was i found out he had the battle like like a week out or something. And I was like, yeah, I booked it two weeks ago. I told you I was going to do one. I said, damn. So I kind of like just let him be the guinea pig. He battled a nigga named So Super. And shout out to So Super. I was there for it. I was there for it just in support. I stayed for like three other battles and I'm listening. I'm like, that's what y'all like? Man, I, I kind of killed this shit. So I ended up booking my own battle. I uh, went through the same avenues. Booked my own battle, whatever. I was on the same card as Ace on a um, on a lower card and um ended up battling. Uh Ace ends up um battling my nigga Villa and seeing what made me stay in battle rap, uh Twerk was there, right? So Twerk comes in uh pause. He checks, he checks out um Ace and he like, man, this nigga crazy. I saw Twerk make a call. To uh to URL, and then next thing you know, Ace has a PG. So to see how that happened, I said, "Oh no, 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 no!" We just thought he took off immediately. So I was inspired. So I was like, "You know what? I'm gonna just grind. I'm gonna do my shit, and eventually it'll, it'll be my turn." So that's how I ended up starting battle rap. I, I had no one, no real intentions. It just one of them. Like, yo, I think we can do this shit, and I just said, "Fuck it." That's incredible. Was your was your rapping style like your battling style, or as a rapper, you were totally different? Uh, rapping style and with my rapping style, I think I'm different. Uh, but it's flashes of it when I'm rapping, when I'm rapping on on stage or something like that. It's flashes of it. But um, battle rapping has made me a better MC altogether. I just I believe when I get back in the booth when I'm doing in 2024. That niggas won't see like was good. I, I'm kind of interested to see how I plan out too because I haven't been in the booth in probably like three, four years. Like, like I, them two sessions, that was it. I never been back in the booth. Like that was it. Like I just ended up just started battle rapping. So, like my plans was to end this shit. Like yo, generate a fan base, and when the time is right, it's time to put out some music. So I think around like right now, 2024, I'm gonna start. Y'all gonna start seeing me uh release some music i think this would be the perfect time if there's anything that i i really truly respect about how you put things together is how you market to your fan base i mean just with what you've done with your uh trophies line how did you even come up with the whole trophies concept 
Okay, so um, Ultimate Madness uh, 4, when I went against uh, Murder, right, I got on um, I got on a Louis scarf and got some Louis shoes on. And I went to go, I, I bought my outfit kind of backwards. I was supposed to get the shoes and then the shirt. But uh, I ended up ordering the scarf or some, some shit like that that I had around my head. When I went to go get the shirt from the stores, they said that they had it, but they didn't fucking have it. So I was like, so I was pissed because I had to fly out like the next day. And everybody kind of know like within battle week, everything get hectic. You know? Problems, job, outfits, stylists, babysitter, all type of shit just started happening. <laughs> so that was just one of the things that I was like, fuck. So um, I ended up, I ended up uh, walking through the mall, like trying to find some shit to go with my shit. And I ended up uh, seeing a nigga who was doing like custom work. And so I was like, yo, you know what? I've been saying trophies. I done coined trophies. I was like, man, maybe I just, fuck it. Let me just put this on a shirt and I'll worry about the second round. So when I uh, wore it or whatever, I think that was one of the best decisions I can do because I had a breakout performance. My first breakout performance was against Murder. And it was like, yo, who the fuck is that? And so they they was in tune to me as a character and also like, yo, what's this trophy shit? And uh, I got my first DM. And they could say, yo, where can I get that from? Wait, and, you telling um, me at UM4 when you battled Murder was the first time that that happened? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just... That's I know I've been crazy. saying trophies. I've been saying trophies. And like in old footage, you will see me in the background of old footage just saying trophies out of nowhere. Ultimate Madness 1, Jay Black was coming out with like a with a trophy in his hand. And he's like, yo, shout out to Sheed. That's before niggas even really knew me. But I knew if I kept saying trophies in the back of battles, that ill, ill, it's like one of those. It'll catch on. Things. It's a catchphrase. Facts. Like, kind of like, have you seen that um movie with Will Smith when he was a con man? Like, yeah. I, I, focus. He, yeah, focus. And at the toward the end, he was saying how he tattooed the number in the nigga's head to pick number 33. It was something like that. He just kept on doing threes all day so the nigga could pick it. So I was looking at that like, you know, if I keep on saying trophies, that's just my version of saying fire. Or or that or that was that was crazy. I just say trophies instead. So when I did that, I was like, you know what? I might as well just put this shit on the shirt. That's something I'm trying to coin. I had a breakout performance, and then somebody DM me and said, "Yo, where can I get that from?" And I was sitting there like, you know what? Who am I to just be like, oh no, nah, that was just something I was wearing. If you want it, shit, let's flip some real quick. I don't care if it's twenty dollars. And then next thing you know, it just took off. That's genius. Your like your marketing for that needs to be studied. It was the it, it really is one of the smartest branding things I've ever seen happen in battle rap. And everybody and the fact that you made it to where everybody could add their logo or or their idea to it with the variations on the hoodies. Pure genius. How, why, how did you decide to incorporate to make it that interactive? Um, well, there's two things that I, one one thing is. Um, I first want to uh, shout out Hollow Hollow the Don, uh, his blueprint that I, I studied his blueprint, and I and I mixed it a little bit with EFB. I mixed it a little bit with EFB as far as like marketing. Uh, Rum Nitty at the end of the battle, he'll he'll be like, "Yo, don't don't pay attention to what if you want to pay attention to what I got on some LOM tr- uh, clothing dot com." Right. And I started thinking. Yo, this is probably like how they do Al Capone. Al Capone was like hollering at niggas like, yo, nigga, I'll give you $100 if you just wear this shirt with your battle. So I started thinking like, yo, influence has a lot to do with success. It's about who's wearing it. So it's like, yo, you can, that's why niggas be outside of niggas concerts. Like, yo, just, just hold up my shirt just to show, so get some motion, get some traction. So my first thing I did was, well, what, who do I have a good rapport with? That's influential. Next thing you know, I sent Jay Black a black and gold hoodie. I was like, yo, his his theme for champion is gold. So I said, you know what? I'm going to try black and gold. Sent him one. Sent him his logo to personalize it. Like, yo, this is a one-on-one. This is his. As soon as I sent that and he wore it, it just it, it went like, like it, people started inquiring about that. So I just had a black and silver one and a black and gold one. I knew I was going to do colorways, but, you know, I kind of learned with this shit. Like, yo, 
you kind of stretch out your material as much as you can, your product as much as you can. It's kind of like when I was like selling. It's like, yo, if I know I got some fire ass tree over here, why would I flood the streets with that when my when my product is not done with this bullshit? So I would make sure the bullshit is damn near done because if I put out the top shit over top of the bullshit, my bullshit is never going to sell. So I started putting that shit out and I was like, I bet. Now that the, the silver and gold is starting to die out, let's get a different color in there. And my first color I gave to um, Swervo. Swervo wore a black and green one and he uh, performed. And um, we got some good footage from that and niggas started inquiring about that. The, um, the credit I'm giving to the next person as far as the customization is she probably don't know. It's Jazz. What? Jazz had told me one day, yo, she, why don't you tra- change the Y to a trophy? Like at the very end, it's like trophy with a Y. And then I tried to design. And I was like, ah, I don't like that. Then I changed the O because it was in the middle to a trophy. But I just did that for experimental like type of thing. And I was like, you know what? Hmm, I might got something here. Bill Collector was very supportive. So Bill Collector's emblem is his, is his face with a bush, so with an afro. So I said, okay, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to put this in the O. And when I did that, I said, okay, I think I'm able to do customs. Like, just if I'm able to at least draw it out or, or put it on my program, then I'll be good to do that. The next thing you know, it just started flying off the shelf because people was like, yeah, you got a trophy joint, but you ain't got this one. People people want to be a part of your movement. And if you can include them in your journey or how you did your shit or you can include them in something different, that's what that's what I just banked on. I said, I bet. You know, they not only they want a trophy uh, merch, but they want this. Like, nah, this is a one-on-one. I think it got to the point where I was flooding so much People's like, nah, I want something kind of different. And people just start coming up with ideas. And there you have it. We got the site um, selling over to Japan. Once, once I made my first sale over to Japan, I said, oh, no, 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 I got to keep doing this. I had a Japan. I had a UK, Jamaica, Canada. I don't, You're I don't, international with this? That's incredible. I'm definitely international. I'm definitely. And I can, I'll show you the mock-ups when I'm done. Like, it's like, yo, it's, it's, I couldn't stop. I said, oh, nah, nah, nah. Niggas is hollering at me from London, all type of shit. I was like, nah, this, this is fire. I never thought I was going to do that. Wait, wait, wait. All right. We got to switch gears. Get, keep it rap. Keep it rap. So your style and rapping, I'm, I can confidently say I wasn't familiar with you. I know you had your G-Lo battle. You had the mm-hmm. murder battle. It wasn't until the true foe battle that I even knew who you were, um, uh, you and four. But you did such an incredible job. I was like, who the fuck is this? Like yeah. how you rapped to the promo, to the confidence, to the stage presence, to just like you had no problem being you with your own style and for for a little bit of time battle rap was starting to get a little stagnant with styles and people were scared to veer off a certain style and you just you just it it seemed like you popped up out of nowhere with your own style and just ready to go like what gave you the confidence to have your own style on the platform where you know people want to hear a certain style uh first thing i appreciate it um second thing is it's like um I, i made a promise to myself when i when I entered the um, game, I told myself um, I'm not I'm not going to be part of any groups. I'm going to rap my way because I knew I was hanging up rap. I would, this was my last straw. Like I didn't want to be the guy who was still hanging on to rap dreams and shit like that. Like I'm I'm, a, I'm just really like a get money nigga. So it's like if I ain't seeing the money in this shit, like yo, it's time to hang up this talent. But this was my last talent that I had. I loved drawing. I gave that up. I loved ball. Gave that up. I loved um, playing the drums. I gave that up. I always loved rap. So this was my last talent that I was about to give up. So I said, yo, if I'm going to get this shit up, Paul, then I'm going to end up actually rapping my way. Like I'm going to do this shit my way so when I leave, I can be like, nigga, I gave my all. Like I did what I wanted to do. I wasn't. People told me to change up my style so much when I first dropped and I first like was really getting attention, yeah, I can't fuck with him. He's too animated and this and that, this and that. Nah, I knew this is a hate-driven sport. So I tried to filter through it as much as I could. And I'm like, yo, I'm going to stay true to myself. 
that a lot of the greats niggas hated before they niggas hated twerk. Niggas hated twerk. Like, nah, I don't like none of that. And now twerk has a format. I wasn't hearing slogans. You know, wasn't nobody saying, you need a slogan before you go into your bar. Nah, I wasn't hearing that. That strapped in was the first real, like, template that I heard. Like, man, what's your what's your slogan that you're going to say before you say a bar? So I was taking in mind that, you know, it's going to take a little while for niggas to fuck with me. But the thing about battle rap culture is... You got fans that really were with such an underground sport that it take diehard fans. Once you in the culture, you in battle rap. So it's different sections. You in battle rap, you already not looked at it like, yo, man, you, you're not looking at all the industry rappers. You are, but if you in a battle rap, you get a different type of ear. And then now, not only is this fan in battle rap, he's a fan of you who happens to battle. That's a very loyal fan. It's a very loyal <laughs> fan. So with that fan being so loyal, that's why I'm taking this opportunity in 2024. I think I generated enough of a fan base where I can be like, look, these fans are going to support my music just as long as it's good. I, I try to put out as much quality as I can. I try to my clothing quality as far as my brand quality, what I dress like quality, what I, I try to just overall be that way. Customer service quality. So it's like, yo, I've already made a template. My style is different. So I'm just looking at the dynamics, my slogan, my my emblem, my, you know, I'm, I'm one of the only niggas who got an emoji. Like, but yo, the, you see a trophy fact. emoji, that's it. I can I can literally just put trophy. And niggas like, I got a trophy. Like, versus fire <laughs> type of shit. It's all marketing like type of thing. So I, um. The fact that you even have that kind of business mind is great. Like. For you to approach this the way you do, I wish more battlers would understand and do that as well, because this is a business. Granted, you know, it's talent driven, but you to excel, especially the way you have, you have to have that business state of mind and salute to you for even having that. Who yeah, you got like, a network? Who put your who who where everybody when they start rapping, there's always somebody that they not emulate, but they listen to the most to develop their style. If you had to pick people that helped you develop your style, who are those people that inspired you? All around or battle rap? Just battle rapping. Just battle rap? Um, uh, all right, I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it like this. There's battle rappers that I, that, um, I had a few favorites. I had a few favorites. So um, B Magic was one of my first like favorite battle rappers, my right, first absolutely. favorite battle rappers. Uh, B Magic, um, and then the respect level I would give Rum Nitty and Twerk. And what I mean by respect level is, I was really if a battle dropped from Rum Nitty or Twerk that I wanted to see, I would have to have a J Road. I'll go get something to eat, you know, and then I'll turn on the battle. Versus like a lot of other people, I might be cleaning out the house turn on a battle while I'm listening, doing other things. But I realized I was giving them a lot of, like, respect, attention, like, type of shit. So I was like, so between them right there and uh, Daylight, of course, and Daylight, um, Daylight was one of my, like, second favorite battle rappers, like, type of shit. So it was B-Magic, Daylight, Rum, Twerk. Like, those are, like, my favorite. I, I fuck with a lot of other people, but absolute favorite battle rappers, those are my favorite battle rappers. So That's a solid cool. lineup of people right there. You know, discovering, as a fan, discovering battle rappers is kind of like when you discover bands that people might not know and, like, you yeah. cherish it, and then, it, and then the band explodes, and then, you know, the journey begins. Um, yeah. For me, when, when I watched your one-rounder with Dot, and I know it's not talked about as much, but I think that was like one of the most masterful di displays of lyricism. I was mm -hmm. watching the battle. And if you're in here and you haven't watched that battle, please watch that one round of Sheed versus Dot. For me, it's two stages. Like I hear a battle rapper and I'll be like, okay, that dude's fire or he's cool. I'll listen mm -hmm. to his battles when he, you know. But then there's that moment where you hear a battle rapper and you're like, okay, hold on. I am now a fan of this person. Like, I'm going to go yeah, look for yeah. this person. That bat, that dot battle was what did it for me. You did this thing where you were rapping at him and you broke down the letters of his name, but you, yeah. were, but you were punching with it. And why do you, how do you take risks like that? Like, how do you, how do you even come up with that type of shit? I've always been a big risk, low reward type of guy. 
I mean, uh, I mean, big risk, big reward type of guy. And um, that's been like that, like almost like my whole life. Like that's been like that my whole life. Uh, I was kind of raised differently, like type of shit. So I didn't care about being a minority because I was I grew up a minority already. You know, me being Muslim was was tough growing up because you just I'm in a lot of public Christian schools, and when your mother pull up with a with a scarf and a hijab, everybody like, why your mother dressed like that? Like yeah. it's. So I was always used to just being different. I got a different name, all type of shit like that. So I was always used to being different. So that's why um, I kind of stayed true to that. But coming up with a lot of these, um, you know, in this day and age right now, it's a lot of niggas who's learning how to rap through battle rap. That was never me. I learned I learned how to be an artist before I learned how to battle rap. Battle rap uh, arrived second. It wasn't first. So... I never had intentions of being a battle rapper type of thing. So I had intentions of being a rapper. So a lot of my shit is rap. I have a a, a blanket of rap first, and then I attach the battle rap to it. So I try not to go away from lyricism. I didn't realize until somebody said, yo, that's the way you move. And you, you, you're a performer. I was like, for real? Absolutely. Like, I just did. I didn't know. I didn't know I was a performer. So I was like, I just move with my lyrics. A lot of the times my hand would move to, to kind of, if you look at my hand while I'm rapping, my hand is moving how the word will move. Like, so if I say, and sway, I'll move like, like almost like a Kung Fu style. Like if I sway this way, then because I'm, sometimes I don't know what word is next, but my hand <laughs> would. Like, and it, it's kind of crazy how it go, but sometimes that's just how it would be. And I end up performing that way, but um, coming up with some of these lyrics, I just try to um, whatever is the first thing that I think of. I I just say to myself, now that's what everybody would say. Let's think of the second way. Now I think of the second way somebody would say it, then I'd be like, okay. Now that's the second way that somebody will be thinking. Like somebody already else said it that way, so I'm gonna say it this way. So now let's try to stretch that idea to a third way. If we can find a third way, that's how you get to left field. Like, I never saw that punch coming because I saw, I saw the first two ways you could have said that punch. So when I created that, that punch, I said, you know what? If I say it like this, they're going to guess it. If I say it the other way, the battle rappers might guess it, and a few people who advance guess it. If I say it this way, I'll start getting respect. It's like, yo, you really put in the time to that bar. Even though some bars are just fired straight up, but sometimes you got to have the awareness to say, yo, you got to flip this bar a whole nother way and, and do something different. So, bro, you really a genius, bro. Like, but aside from your incredible writing ability, it looks like you just be having fun on stage. When you and Swervo teamed up and y'all did the two on two and you were jumping up and down saying, I got a 30. I was just like, it wasn't supposed like, to be like that. So, but are no, no, you like, just like, having a good time? If you, or like, if you listen to the joint, like it's like, um, uh, we ran that that I hate swerve for that. We ran that <laughs> shit back like so many times, but the pattern was, um, like like putt putt. Uh, it was like uh, uh like hut hut something something putt putt. And he said, I'm about to put a shotgun to the plug. It's duck hunt with this thirty fool. Shut up. What's that in the drop? It was supposed to go like that. Right. But when when it, I was like, uh, with this 30, we got a reaction. Nigga, I got a 30. He was like, yo, yo, yo. He was really trying to get me to shut up. He was like, <laughs> I, you, I, I got the best a part of I just kept saying. So when he finally <laughs> said, like, shut up. Like, I was like, bet. It's time to go on. Like, it's just <laughs> improvising. It's just improvising, man. A lot of this Bruh. shit is. A lot of this shit is like stand-up comedy, fool. You can have a whole act, but if you see something, you got to kind of like improvise. Like it's like, yo, like, nah, they they kind of want this, they kind of want that. And since we're setting off the show, let's make this entertaining. You know, it's crazy because you are you're very entertaining. You're very charismatic. You know, it's 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 dope to watch you uh, do your battles. But I really didn't like early on when they started comparing you to Bill Collector. It kind of pissed me off in a way because it was like. No, this is something totally different. How did you feel when they set that mat battle for you and Bill Collector? Did you feel like it's time to prove people wrong, or did you feel like it's too soon? What were your thoughts going into that battle? A couple of things with that. Um, uh, when I first got the comparison, I understood that people, 
they're not just battle rap. When people see something different to make it familiar, they have to compare it to something else in order to, you know, register it in their mind. It's like, man, that 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 Chrysler looked like a phantom. Why can't it just be a Chrysler, bro? Why I gotta look like something else? Like, because I don't know what it is, but it looked like that. Hey yo, you see that bitch Britney? Nah, she kind of looked like Aisha. Why can't it just be Britney? Like, like type of shit. So it's like when people don't know something, they try to make it f- familiar to something else. And since they didn't know something, they knew I was unorthodox. So they put me in a category immediately. I read, That was the only category I was willing to accept. I didn't want to just be a writer. I didn't want to just be a performer. I knew unorthodox was the lane I wanted to pick because I was already unorthodox with my style, period. But I knew another thing about unorthodox is it's a style that people are uh, afraid of. It's like, it's a more well-rounded style. It's like, I can't quite get the style because it's so left that he kind of does a little bit of everything. If you got a pen, you'd be like, all right, I know how I, I'm going to attack a pen with, with just performing. You got a performer, it's like, yo, I'm going to attack a performer with the pen. But if I'm unorthodox, it's like, yo, he got a little bit of everything. So that was one aspect of, of that comparison. I was, I was okay with it. The second thing is that... Um, when I got compared to Bill and with in the um and the matchup actually started, the nigga Bill reached out to me. And he was like, Yo, you ready to put these comparisons behind us? Like we we know we not the same, but that's what that's they seem like they right. want, type of thing. Another thing, shout out to Bill. Bill Ben had that offer and he said, I do not want a battle sheet if he's not getting paid what I get paid. Shout that's out to Bill. Fire. Shout out to Bill Collector. Shout out to Bill Collector. He said, I don't want a battle sheet. Unless he's getting paid what I get paid. Now, granted, they didn't give me what, what Bill Collector gets paid, but I was a little bit shy under it. And I got a leap. Then I was like, yo, that's some real shit. Like, he he would not take the battle unless that happened. He had respect for me. I have respect for him. So shout out to Bill for that. That's a great, man, that's a drool. Thank you. For, that's so dope. Yeah, uh, a lot yeah. of people don't know behind the scenes, but collect a really good dude. So to hear that is, that's super dope, man. Good nigga. Good nigga, man. So if you, if you had to pick everybody has that moment where they realize okay i'm here now niggas like niggas know what's up like what was the battle for you where you had an outstanding performance and you felt like okay i'm solidified i'm sheet happens what was that battle uh my my battle that people would say it's my murder battle that kind of got everybody kind of it's where i felt the difference was true for part two true for part two you and five. You and five. True four part two. Where I really that I, I knew it was going on. Like I knew I was known. I knew I had a name. I knew, you know, certain shit, especially from the first UM tournament. But this one right here, I, I was saying that this one was just special. This one was special. And it was like that's the one where I really felt like I I was a fa- I was faced with a lot of adversity. It was a it was a lot of cards stacked against me. And I often tried to emulate that battle until I realized I can't. The the cards were stacked and I can't really emulate that again. And what I mean by that is that this was a this was a rematch. Now you would say, yo, you had none none before that, and that's a rematch, but it was different because none none didn't stop me from moving on in UM4 to win twenty five thousand dollars. True foe did. So in true foe. If y'all niggas know True Foe, True Foe was he was waving his flag like nigga, I, I beat you one time, I I win again, nigga. Like type, he was off of that type of <laughs> shit. So right. I'm like, yo, and he always held that flag, and he held it enough to be like he used it as a tool to be like, yeah, and I can't wait to bump into you, Ace. I already got your man out of here. And being though that I I, I entered the game with Ace, people will always compare me right next to him. So. It was like, yeah, if I can get Sheed out of here, then I can get you out of here. And I was like, man, you really think you really got me out of here? Like, you did it, nigga. You won by the skin of your fucking teeth, and I think I won that, like, type of thing. <laughs> so when I the second time when I ended up battling Trufo, um, uh, the, like I said, the cards were stacked. Um, Doc was in my I – had, I had one person. Doc was in my corner. Doc can tell you. When they call it, it took me once – it took me a second – so when they they were like, oh, she happens. Where you at? Where you at? I'm in the corner, and this is the first time it ever happened. I was like, let's go, she. This nigga not better than you. I was like, this nigga's not better than you. 
That's hey, tough. this bitch ass nigga, and I just start going, I just start going crazy. I'm in the corner like, this. you mean to tell me this nigga gonna stop you twice? Twice? And I was just going crazy in the corner. Doc was like, yo, she. I was, he was like, yo, they ready? And I was like, all right, bet, bet, bet. Like, I, I don't know what happened. Like, I don't know what happened. I just got mad. I got, no, no, no. I know exactly what happened. The, I know that my bad, I'm tripping. I was in the corner, but Nunu and, and Jay Black was doing an interview on, like, what battles we got coming up first, next. And Nunu was so loud. I got true foe. It's like, yeah, she cool and all, but he not going to be in. And I was like, she was like, I just don't think he better. And some along them lines. And I was like, <laughs> and then I was in the court. That's why when she was like, fight back, nigga, I already knew what size she was. I am, motherfucker. Like, I already <laughs> knew what she was on. <laughs> so I was like, yo, you already rooting for him. So I was like, yo, I'm watch this. And then next thing you know, it just happened. It just happened. And when I got off the stage, the way my phone blew up, like, I had celebrities hit me up. Let's I go. Had, I had battle rappers I never talked to before. They didn't even know me hit me up. I had a bunch of... I was like, oh, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. But I couldn't bask in the moment because in two weeks I had JC. So when I really stepped back and I looked, I was like, damn, fool, you kind of went crazy that battle. Like, I couldn't, really, I couldn't really sit there with the battle because I was too busy focused. But when it was over, when I got eliminated and I stood back and I looked, I was like, fool, man, you... I had a I had two back to back um rematches. I had none none and then I had true false. Like, well, that's yeah. never happened before. Nobody had but the thing that's never happened was my last battle before none none was none none. I had none none in March, then had none none in June. So Crazy. I was like, damn, I, I don't think nobody's ever done a rematch that fast. So I did a rematch and then right after that, my next battle was another rematch from last year. I was like, oh nah, man, like it happened on my birthday. It was too many things. I was. It happened on my birthday. So it was too. That's I was like, crazy. yo, you about to lose on your birthday? I was like, your birthday will <laughs> never be the same. I was like, nah. You know, that, that was what it was, man. So what's a, what's a battle that you had where um you were disappointed in your performance and you were like, ah, I could have done better here. Like, what's a battle you look back and like, I was not at my best for that one? Um, I'm going to have to say... All right, just me personally and not yeah. more of a vibe or um what battle where I was looking at I was like ah that wasn't really it. <sighs> I try to I try to give my see the thing about it is I enter every battle confident and I've been realizing that like fans and, and um reactions that make me change my um you know my uh my feeling about the overall battle and I'll sit there like yo but I really into that battle with confidence just because they changed my idea because this and that. I don't know. So right now I'm kind of stuck on that, but I know battles that I've I've had and I'm like, yo, that I don't like that joint. I don't like how it was, it was one you didn't transpired. Like. I didn't like the 40 battle. I didn't like <laughs> the um I didn't like the um I didn't like the I didn't like how shit played out with the Danny battle. I didn't Me too. like Me too. um uh, what else? Then I just was like, man, I can't watch the Trufo part one. Trufo part one. I was like, yo, man, like it took me weeks to watch that battle after it dropped. Like, I you, was like you have a hard good. time watching. Like, you have a hard time going back to watch battles you didn't like. I never watched forty again. I never watched the forty battle. But you don't feel like there's more lessons to be learned from battles that don't go the way they should versus the battles that go well. <laughs> Um, there, there are lessons to be learned, but then I also realized that sometimes don't get that confused with dynamics mm. that what, what, what lesson am I getting out of watching my Danny battle? Like that. I'm like, yo, like, um, the cards were stacked. It Bring was like, 30 yo, niggas with you. That would be that, a good lesson. Yep. How? Just fly 30 niggas. Out. Rent a boat, something. Rent a boat and fly 30 niggas out. You sound wild. <laughs> but no, nah, it's it's more so like I was looking at it like, yo, like dynamics. You can lose a battle because the crowd is choosing who who they want to win before you even say yo. That's it's your fact. it's your um it's your responsibility and your skill set is supposed to you know 
uh, make them actually uh, root for you on your side. But sometimes it's just not like that. You you can't tell me that you can only gain respect, you know. But if if a if a if an athlete enters another person's arena, when he's when he's actually entering the court, coming out the tunnel, they're heckling him immediately. They don't they want to see him do horrible uh-huh. type of thing. And I started looking at those aspects like the dynamics. Fool, before I said yo against Danny Myers, it was Geechee. Thank God Geechee had to get Tay Savage from the from the uh, door because Tay Savage just showed up or something like that. But at first it was Geechee in the front, Rum Nitty, J- J- JC was directly behind Rum Nitty, real name Brandon, next. Um, the entire West Coast Avengers was just entire, standing right there. Everybody right. Yo, before the battle started, the nigga next say, hey, yo, Sheed, I fuck with you, but God damn, it's the West. And he threw up the West. And, and like, <laughs> niggas on their side, which is like, you already know what it is. And I swear, nigga, I swear, I don't know who said it, but somebody said something along the lines like, yeah, that, uh, yeah, we know what happened with Foots and Rum. And I was like, ah, oh, fuck. I was, I was like, I was like, because Foots and Rum battle ain't dropped, but Foots had, he had the world with him. Damn it. He had damn it versus Rum. So it was just like Rum felt, I know Rum felt like he got jumped. But that's how I felt when I was done. I was like, fool, when I tell you before I said, yo, the crowd is on, kill that nigga Danny. I'm going to get <laughs> a, a beloved battle rapper from the West at an EFB party. Man, <laughs> I was but like, you still fought through it though. Gotta yeah, salute I fought that. through. I, I definitely fought through, and it was just one of them things where I was just like, yo, you know, I had them some sometimes I had them, sometimes I didn't. But that's part of the game, man. It's it's a respect thing. A lot of MCs that give you respect for that shit, even if the fans don't. Like an MC saying you was fired kind of supersedes 10 people saying you were trash. Oh, like, so but I, beyond I that, that though, speaking of being on the West. Brother, you're one of those battlers who I think you're going to transcend battle rap. Uh, I remember watching you um, with Emerson, shout out to Emerson Kennedy, but you did the segment with Top Line with Tara Mobley. Yeah, And, yeah. bro, you are, your personality is larger than life, and you're just so, you're made to be a superstar, bro. How did you feel, how did you decide to do that, to get on the the, the skits with Emerson Kennedy, and how did how did you... How did you get the confidence? And did you take acting courses or you just went up there and was yourself? I'm I think I'm pretty much always I'm I'm always myself, man. Even you want I separate people who fuck with me very quickly by showing them who I am. If I had who I am, they can't gauge who I am. So I can't be mad if their gauge is, is wrong because I've been faking like type of shit. So I try to show people who I am, like, yo, I'm gonna tell you straight up. Whether I fuck what I fuck with something or not, or I try to be as honest as I can. I try to move with as much integrity. I try to, you know, and not have no malice intent. But as far as like the being over there, uh EK, I saw what um Lou Castro was doing with um with EK and jazz and shit like that. So I reached out to EK. Me and EK got a good rapport. And um I forgot what battle it was that I was over there on the West. And I was like, I was like, yo, EK, while I'm over there, he said, hell yeah, like we can, we can, I think it was, matter of fact, it was my chaos battle, chaos battle. I was, um, I was over there and, um, I ended up doing, the, um, that was traffic five. Yeah, that was traffic. Is that traffic? No. Yeah, traffic, traffic five. five. Cause oh, yeah, traffic, traffic six, five. you battled yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. I just did traffic six. Yeah, you're right. You're right. So traffic five, I went over there and, um, and we just improvised. We just improvised. I'm just. I'm one of them type of niggas is like, what's what's going on? Okay, pretty much how I'm supposed to be. Oh, I bet. Bet. I mean, I think when you I think when you just know who you are, you don't have to turn yourself on. Cause I'm always on. Yo. So it's like, all right, so pause. Yeah, that was kind of crazy. That was insane. That was kind of turn myself on. Is that gay if I'm talking to myself? I don't know what you got going on, brother, but keep going. Let me go to the mirror. Let me see how the mirror feels. Damn, it just say I'm gay. <laughs> anyway, so um so we gonna move on from that. <laughs> so, so anyway, that's pretty much how that how that happened. I just I went over there and I just improvised. So all right, come on. Let's let's improv. 
So that wasn't scripted. You weren't you you just freestyled that basically. He freestyled everything. Freestyled everything. That's crazy. Yo, you really a star. Like I don't know if you do this or not, but I always encourage people to take a second to celebrate themselves because life's a crazy journey. You gotta think. You battled, had some incredible battles in the culture. You got your own merch that's super popping. You doing uh at TV episodes with Emerson Kennedy. Like you got a lot going on. And you're now about to drop music in 2024. Do you got like an album title? Is it is is there anything you could one of those something crazy? And I was so mad at EK. He took my title, my um my mixtape that I was gonna ever put out. I always had the because I got a gray patch. It was always gonna be the gray area. I swear mm. it was. You can't yeah. use that now. I swear it was. I swear it was. So when he said that and it and it and it actually rung. I'm like, yeah, I can't use it. So I don't know. I'm gonna just kind of let the work do what it kind of kind of do, and then I I'll see. That's that's something I'm not really thinking about too much. A name of a project, well, it'll be here. It'll be here. I'm not thinking about it too much. But uh, battle rap is a tool, man. I try to look at this shit as um, it's it's kind of like it's kind of like college. People be thinking that. You know, a degree is supposed to decipher like how your life is about to go. No, it's like between colleges, networking, you use that degree and you use that tool to spin off into something that you're more equipped after college to spin off to do something that you actually really want to do. So with this right here, I've seen how everybody has a door that uh, some of the successful rappers have done, whether it's wilding out, acting, uh, any other type of thing. At first was battle rap based. And the reason why they were so successful is because battle rappers, battle rap fans are very supportive when they fuck with you. When they fuck with you, you got a fan for life, uh-huh. like type of thing, because you're already a secret. Everybody likes to feel like, nigga, you don't even know nothing about that until I told you about that. So battle rap is one of those type of things. I think it's just like a, it's a, it's a very respected art that even artists walk up to battle rappers all the time and say, I can't do what you do. Battle rappers don't walk up to, to rappers and say, I can't do what you do because we do the truest form. So whatever I, I choose to spin off to from this, I'm using this opportunity as a tool to gain my solid foundation of whatever I want to do. Okay. Well, I have this part of the segment of the interview where I have three opponents that I would ask you if you would ever battle and you can tell me yes or no or just your thoughts on the matchup. Mm-hmm. So number one, I always start with a female MC. Now, there's a bunch of different female MCs that you could battle. But mm-hmm. me personally, I would love to see Sheed versus Gaddis. Is that something you would consider? Yeah, 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 yeah. Gaddis, uh, I think that's a, that style makes sense. She's she's a rapper. She got a lot of pockets. She's animated. It's um, I definitely do that battle. We actually even we we even actually thought about doing a two on two. That would be crazy. crazy. Yeah, yeah, we even thought about doing two and two, but yeah, I battle goddess definitely. Okay, so this next one, a little unorthodox, A Ward. Uh, definitely. Um, I um, I last year, I think it was last year, or maybe sometime top of this year, A Ward uh arrived across my desk, and I felt like I wasn't ready yet. I'm being honest, I felt like I wasn't ready yet. That type of thing. Niggas was like, for real. I was like, yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't it's ready. It's kind of crazy, she, because you 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 battle Bill Collect. You're ready. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, I just, I just, I'm being all honest. Uh, well, I didn't stand at that time in front of a rebuttaler. I haven't stood in front of a rebuttaler besides none, none, and and none, none will give you one or two. When you start talking about an onslaught of rebuttals, it's like, yo, she, you ready for that? You need a little bit more. You know, try. Let's get something under your belt, like something like that. Let's let's. Let's see some approaches. So at the time, I didn't think I was ready. But um, after being in front of a couple of rebuttals now, I had none, none. I had Danny Myers. It's like, yo, I kind of learned some shit. So, yeah. I mean, look I, at I the people battle. you battle, Sheed. Uh, Bill Collector, Shotgun Shug, Miss Hustle, uh, JC. These are legends. That, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, your crazy, resume is crazy. crazy. Yeah, my resume kind of, I ain't going to lie. I looked at my Bro. resume the other day, and it's kind of crazy. It's but, crazy. But I, I live in the humbleness of like, yo, man, I'm humbled by it. You know, it is what it is. Let's move on. Like, let's I move it. on. Next, I respect next, it. Next play. Yeah, I respect it. So the last one I have for you, I always ask a legacy battle. 
Um, and I got two options for you. Mm. One legacy battle is a Maryland legacy battle. Tay Rock, would you battle Tay Rock? I kick Tay Rock ass. Oh, sorry, maybe you didn't hear me. Uh, yeah, would you yeah, battle? I kick, I, I kick Tay Rock. That's my guy. That's my guy. And, I, and I'm only saying that because Tay Rock respect that type of shit. So, oh yeah, show me. Yeah. He like, he like oh yeah, show me. Like type of thing. Tay yeah, Rock. Tay Rock is is a goat. That nigga is a goat. Um, I will be honored to battle Tay Rock. Like I'll be honored. Like just, just sometimes like it's Tay. And the crazy thing, I was about to quote something that I always quote, and it, it is from Tay Rock. It's like, yo, it might seem easy to you a lot closer. Like, and it's like, and I've always held on to that statement because you will see a battle rapper from the horizontal view as a viewer, but when you're standing in front of a battle rapper. And you get to see his eyes expression and his face straight up while he's rapping to you. It's a different. It's different. Like it's different. So something like that. I've heard Tay Rock is different. Like type of shit. So I would like to get those lessons from Tay Rock. Like what I would learn from that type from a battle like that. Yo, Tay Rock told me so much in between that battle. So I'll be honored to have a battle like that. Shout out to Tay Rock. That would be fire. And me personally, Mount Rushmore candidate. I would say I would love to see a Sheet Happens versus Loaded Lux. Would that be an end game for you? No. no Tell us why me. not. It's not an end game for me. Um, I, I respect Daylight more than Lux. Mm, I respect okay. Daylight more than Lux. And this is no, this is no, it's just um, as far as activeness, as far as what Daylight has done, as far as in my career, the advice that he's given out. The, you know, the, the, just putting me on and just even, you know, shouting me out in, in certain rooms that I'm not even around. Like, he's just doing it now. No, he, he bigs you up every time. Like, he, he definitely. So it's like, I would, that would be more of an end game for me rather than Loaded Lux right now. Um, Loaded is, he's a GOAT. I'm not about to act like he's not. That nigga is one of the, I, I, I really watch Loaded. Like, I watch Loaded. But to me, I didn't I didn't um I didn't gravitate the loaded as much as I did with daylight. I just did I just didn't. Just for some reason, I don't know why. I just didn't. It's just more daylight to me. And that's why I want to see daylight versus Lux a lot. Cause I, I need to see the, the separation. That's real talk. That's real talk. So if somebody had to ask you, Sheed, what is the legacy you want to contribute to battle rap? What would be your legacy when it's all said and done? Um the legacy that I think I believe right now I'm leaving a legacy right now as we speak. My um my style was like, yo, what I can't get with it's too animated, it's too this and that. And then that kind of opened the door for I think I walked through a door for this like generation right now because you had Bill, you had you had Briz, you know, type of these unorthodox unorthodox styles. You got Jack, you know, you got these unorthodox styles. But there was a voice that I kind of put behind my shit. Like, it's a voice with it. So now when you hear a voice in a certain way, I have now, like, um, influenced a lot of battle rappers. Like, I've influenced just a couple. And I'm like, yo, my this is kind of working. It went from, yo, we don't like that style to, that nigga sound like she. And it's like, damn, how'd that happen? Like, type of thing. So between us right now, the legacy I'm leaving open is, it's like, yo, when they niggas end up talking to me is, Hey, yo, do this shit your way. Do this shit your way. If niggas don't like it, yo, you're talented, though. You got to get niggas to like your style. You got to get niggas to like... If you sound like somebody else, they're going to compare you to that some person. Like I kind of use the, the logic of, if you hear me drop a freestyle, it's not going to be on, on another nigga beat. Because either you're going to have to do better than that nigga, or they're going to compare you to... Man, he didn't kill it like Wayne did. It's like, so why the fuck would you jump on the Wayne beat? You jump on your own beat so you can get appreciated through your own beat. 100%. So if just be yourself. If you be yourself, you'll have people tune into you way better. And if they don't like you, at least you know. And they're not trying to really just keep figuring you out because they don't know who you are. So it's just pretty much just stay true to yourself. And you'll get those fans that will gravitate to you. If people say they don't fuck with you, that's cool. And maybe they'll... they'll They'll come back around and rock with you. Maybe they won't, but at least they know because they know who you are. That's something they don't like. I don't like pork. So you won't, I can't eat pork. You won't find me eating pork. 
So it's like, yo, I'm good off of that. And now they know where I stand. I'll ne- you never had to worry about that shit again. But if I dibble and dabble, now you can say he not even really Muslim for real. <laughs> it's like, oh, damn. Like, you see how that goes? So that's what I'm off of. I respect this shit. A lot of people you don't, you, don't you, get you their no respect. Choice. A lot of people don't get their respect while they're walking into their greatness. But you one of them, bro. It didn't take too many battles for the whole culture to see that you're one of them. From your writing, to your merch, to your personality, to what you're doing, Emerson Kennedy, to the music you about to drop. We support you. We rocking with you. We salute you. You are a voice in this culture. You are a staple in this culture. And we can't wait to see what you do next. God bless you. This was Keep It Rap, episode two. She, thank you for your time. Before you go, you let me ask you a question. Oh man, you know Damn, Ace, Ace. Ace was episode one. He asked me some. I got caught up in them questions. Go ahead, go ahead. Why are you gay? <laughs> Who says I'm gay? <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. That's my time, man. I appreciate. It. <laughs> Thank you for pulling up. She got she you, hey, yo, Why you Why you didn't deny it? Uh, uh, shout out to Maryland, man. The whole 